What's going on, Garage Gang? Matt from Garage MC here, guys. In today's video, we're going to rebuild an axle carrier for the TRX 250R, 1986 to 89. Be the same procedure. This will also be the same procedure for a lot of different axle carriers. Um, let's get into it. All right, so. Yes, you can buy an aftermarket eBay carrier for like 50, 60, 80, 45 dollars. You know, depends on what make and model it's for, but it's very simple to rebuild these. But then again, it comes down to is it worth spending the 50, 60 dollars just for the bearing kit to rebuild your OEM or whatever carrier you have? Uh, it really all comes down to what are you using a quad for, you know? If you're out there XC racing or motocross racing, I would definitely not recommend a Chinese carrier. Probably not going to last more than one race, even if it gets to that. If you're a recreational rider and you just leisurely trail ride or, you know, on the street a little bit, which on the street actually will blow the carrier out a lot faster than riding around on the dirt, uh, especially doing wheelies and turning the quad while standing up, um, you know, do what you want with your quad, but... You know, there's other options out there. Like I have this is a Lone Star axle carrier. This is like, these are like 300 bucks, 400 bucks, depending on what you get it for. Probably wondering why I'm not using this for this quad. Um, it doesn't fit. It's for something else. So let's take a look at the bearing kit that I have. I usually go with Pivot Works, but this is what I have here already. I have a few sets of these. So Let's look at um, what this kit is, what it comes with, and what other models this same kit fits. For this, guys, this is the 86 TRX 250R. I'm doing the frame swap on it now. I just got done making the video, rebuilding the shock linkage right there. So if you haven't seen that yet, check it out. Uh, this I would consider skill level 1, skill level 2, you know, depending on... It really depends on the tools you have, man. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. Uh, I'm going to try and do it with just a vise, a punch, and a hammer. Um, you can also use a blind bearing puller. I'll show you what one of those look like in a minute. Uh, we might even need to break it out. Depends on how this goes. Um, so this all balls kit, this is a KPJ10-06C or AB251320. I don't know why they put 19 million different numbers on these things, but this fits uh, fits all different kinds here, man. You can see there. 300X, 400X, 350X, ATC 250R, TRX 250R, uh, all different kinds of models this fits. So what comes in this kit is you have two different thickness O-rings, um, depending on which machine you're using it for. These go on the outside of the carrier. This is kind of what makes it nice and snug inside the swing arm. Um, it comes with two new seals that obviously go here to seal the bearings and comes with two new bearings. So, let me get this thing set up. We'll knock these old bearings out. I'm going to clean this and recoat it off camera, and then we'll put it together after that's done. All right, so let's get into this. I removed this seal on this side, just so I don't have to flip it back over again. So, this is made out of cast aluminum. Obviously, the vise will win if you clamp this down too much. This is basically just to give us a little bit of support while we're doing what we're doing. Um, yeah, you could do this still in the quad. I've done it before, like uh, on my Banshee, I've done it before. Um, you know, but if you got a vice, you know, and it's already taken out of the quad, why not, right? So they make a tool to pull these uh, grease seals out. It's, you know, I always just do it with a flathead. I haven't really ran into an issue where I needed to get one. Would it have been nice to have one a few times? Yeah, absolutely. So I just get the flathead stuck in between where the seal and the bearing is. And it might take a couple, you got to go in a couple different locations and get it started <clears throat> and just twist the flathead. Not really too worried about damaging the bearing here because we're changing it, obviously. Uh, you want to be careful because this can mar up the side. You don't really see this when it's in the quad, but... You know, you, you always want to be careful, man, especially when you're working with aluminum stuff. This one's wanting to be a little bit of a problem, but we'll get it. Sometimes they come out easy. Sometimes they don't, man. You got to work it a little bit and get it, you know, up out of where it's seated. You know, after riding these for a long time, they, they tend to get stuck. This one's, uh... 
These things can really prove to be a pain in the ass sometimes, man. I'm going to have to bust out a couple different tools. Uh, the larger blade flathead you use, obviously, you know, the, the less pointy it'll be, but you'll get more you'll get more torque against it when you wedge that in there and twist the screwdriver. Um, at least that's how I normally do them. This one's really proven to be a pain in the ass. Yeah, that'll hurt. All right, let me uh, let me get this freed up and we'll pick back up before I pull it out. Uh, I just started to get it worked free. I got a thinner screwdriver and really got in there between where it meets the bearing. Now I'm just working it up a little bit. And I'm about to, they're usually not this difficult, man. It figures as soon as I turn the camera on, it wants to be a pain in the butt. But, a little persistence, man. She'll, uh, she'll start to see things your way. So, yeah, I got a little beat up. Noticing taking this apart, this still says Koyo Japan on it. So, whoever, uh, the quad that I took this off of was the 86250R that I bought. I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago. Had a Dura Blue axle in it, so either these are still the OEM bearings from 86, or whoever replaced them actually went with the OEM brand, which, you know, isn't too hard to believe considering how much money I spend on OEM Honda shit all the time. Once you get to this point, so there's a bearing that comes in, you know, this one here, comes in from this side, and it goes to... A ledge in here it doesn't go you don't push it all the way out and then the other one's the same thing and then there's a steel sleeve in between the two let me see if I could show you guys this sleeve this sleeve here so there's usually a little bit of wiggle room this is very dirty because I sandblasted this carrier um, I left the bearings in while I sandblasted because I didn't want to take away any material from where the bearings go because it's a you know it's a sweat fit press fit so all right, a um, couple ways to do this. You can either use a blind bearing puller, which I'll show you in a minute. Basically, all that is, it's something that goes inside the bearing. And then when you crank down on it, the, the foot of it expands to larger than this diameter. And then it's connected to a slide hammer, and you can pull them out. So we'll try it um, just by, you know, not everybody has a blind bearing puller just in their toolbox. Um, I barely use it myself. I don't even remember what drawer it's in, but I'll show it to you guys. Um, you could also heat up the carrier. So if you heat this up, aluminum, this will expand slightly, therefore making the fit a little looser, should help you extract the bearing. So the way we're going to do this, I'm going to take, uh, like a long junk flathead that I have. We'll get it in there on an angle and we'll basically just like the under lip of this one, but with the other bearing, we're going to knock it out a little bit. And you want to keep moving sides and, you know, wiggle it out if you do it that way. And then if we have a problem, we'll bust out some heat and see if that helps. And then depending on how it goes, maybe we'll try the blind bearing puller. But, you know, I'm betting that 9.9 .9 out of 10 of you do not have a blind bearing puller. So let's do it the way that you could do this. So this one's being a bitch, guys. Usually it ain't this difficult uh, because usually there's not a camera on. <laughs> Recording what I'm doing, which everything always seems to go a lot more difficult when the camera's on. No camera. This thing, you would have looked at it and it had new bearings in it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to bust out the blind bearing puller. So, how this thing works is it's connected to a slide hammer. The kit that I have comes with several different diameters. So, you want to pick one that just fits in there, but not too loosely because... This part of it here, you crank this into this piece, you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey, and the more you turn it in there, these three feet spread apart. Um, next time I buy a blind bearing puller, I'm going to get one with four feet instead of three. Um, this one, you know, it's it's Amazon, it's it's junk, you know what I mean? But it serves its purpose. So we're going to take two wrenches, and I'm going to expand these feet just past. Just past where the uh, uh, inner edge of the bearing is. So, I don't know if you guys can see this good enough, but as I'm cranking this down, it's expanding those feet. If I can get a grip on it here and still keep you guys in the shot. Uh, so, just cranking it, cranking it, and you want to get it 
as firm in there as you can. You don't want this thing to pull out when you're using the slide hammer. Uh, you could definitely hurt yourself with this. So, you know, obviously don't keep your face in front of it. I know some of you guys are watching right now like, yeah, duh. But <laughs> you guys know exactly what I mean, man. There's, some, there's an ass for every seat. You know what I'm saying? So I like to go as far as I can, get it as snug as it will allow. Um, the next size up one that I had, like, just just was too large, which would have been way better. I don't like extending these as far as they could possibly go, but, you know, it is what it is. All right, so now that that's cranked in there like that. We'll go ahead and use the slide hammer. Hopefully you guys can see this. And that one came out, which is a lot easier than the other one is going to come out. So like I was saying, this carrier has been sitting around for a long time, like out of the quad, not used, you know, no heat ran through it, no nothing. So, you know, and it's got full of sandblasting uh, crushed coal that I use in there. So it's just been sitting like that for, for months. Anyway, now that we got that out, what we'll do is... We'll pull the sleeve out. I'll show you guys what that looks like. So that would be this disgusting, dirty piece here. And like I said, guys, I'm going to clean this up off camera and get this all prepped up and get the carrier recoded and whatnot because, you know, the bike's, bike's got to look fresh, man. So, all right, let me show you guys what I was trying to do the first time by going in with a flathead and pushing out the other bearing. Going in here with a long flathead and, you know, a, l a little bit of leverage. It's, you know, it's not a 10-pound, 4-foot-long sledge, but, you know, it's a little 3-pounder. I think it's a 3-pounder, 2 or 3. So you want to come in here and basically here I'll show you on another bearing. So with that bearing sitting down there, usually when the sleeve is in there, you want to push the sleeve to the side just so you can get the, the flathead on. Give it a little tap. It's going to go crooked. Then you want to go to the other side and you want to just keep wiggling it and working its way out so let's go ahead and attempt this <laughs> with the camera on uh here you know what let me let me show you guys what it looks like in here so you can see how you just see that lip in there now when that sleeve is usually in there you have a little bit of wiggle room to like you know kick the sleeve to the side just like a hair this way you can catch the edge of that bearing down there you guys can see the, the shiny ring in there yeah look how crusty that is that's that's why this carrier probably wasn't a good carrier to pick to make a video on but you know this is about i'd say not the worst one i've taken apart but it's it's up there man so you know so you guys know what you gotta do that blind bearing puller kit which is this right here i think it was like i want to say 40 bucks 35 dollars for the whole kit Comes with a bunch of different sizes. Uh, this tool here, I have no clue what they expect you to use that for. Um, haven't found a use for it yet, but you know, it's in there. There's the one that we used. Comes with different attachments and obviously the slide hammer, which is definitely could use to have a heavier, heavier slide hammer part on it. You know, it's like you're trying to pull this thing apart with like a, a marble or something. It's not even heavy. It's the, the slide part might be like a pound. So obviously the heavier it is, the more more power you're gonna have trying to push that out. Let's uh, let's attempt this. If it doesn't come out or start moving with a couple swings, I will put some heat on it. Like I said, heating it up will make the aluminum expand. Give us a little bit better, better chance here. But like I said, you wanna work around. I usually go like 12 o'clock, six o'clock, three o'clock, nine o'clock, and just keep working it. You want to check it every so often. Make sure you're not coming out super crooked because you will damage this housing. And it's starting to come out. So let me flip this over and show you guys what's going on here. You can see it's getting up to the part where it's starting to want to come out is what I'm saying. It's a little higher on this side. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me see here. You can see it's coming out a little on the crooked side. Not bad, though. Not bad, though. So, all right. I'm going to knock this the rest of the way out. I'm going to clean this thing up and recoat it, and then we'll pick up by putting the new stuff in. I was going to recoat this, but you really don't see it, and I'd rather just leave it clean aluminum. So we're at the part now where these bearings, we're going to put one side in first. 
You'll notice these aftermarket bearings, they're sealed on both sides. Um, I've heard of people saying that they pull the seal out and grease the ball bearings in there and then put the seal back, but I don't see why you would do that. I usually like to put the writing facing out. There's writing on both sides of this. They both say the same thing, so either way is good. So what I'm going to do where the bearings go, I'm going to put some anti-seize here. Just a just a just a touch of it. This way, next time this has to come apart, it doesn't have to, you know, require such a fight. So when you're putting these bearings in, you want to get it started. And you know, same principle, you could heat this up if you want, but these aren't bad to push in. You do not want to hammer on this inner race. You don't want to hammer on the sealed bearing part. You want to go to the outer the outer ring here of this bearing that's what you want to push on you don't you'll totally just trash this bearing and you'll be worse off than where you started maybe so you could either use a socket that is the same outer diameter of this bearing but not to where you end up pressing the socket into the housing itself too so here's another tool this is a bearing and race installation tool so for a bearing obviously use the flat side if you're using this to install a race like in the neck of a dirt bike or a trike you would use the tapered side um, this comes with different size uh, plates here that you could use you want to go with the closest size you can to the outer but not to where it gets pressed into the housing same thing we're just going to start walking this in and you want it to go in evenly uh, this kit that I have with this uh, bearing or race installation tool, this was just a hair bigger than that. So I just threw it in the lathe and took down like a mill and it, it slides in the, the housing nice, but it won't get stuck. So I had to do that to a different one too. Uh, when I did the wheel bearings in the street bike video, I think that was like, I don't know, a year ago or so. All right, so we're in the vise, not clamped down heavy. I'm just supporting it. So we're going to start tapping this in. And you can see it's going, wanting to go in crooked. So you could favor one side. And once it starts going, it will level itself out as it goes in. This one's wanting to go in crooked. It's just another, you know, camera's on. So, of course, it's going to give me a problem. So you want to get yourself as even as you can. Like I said, you could favor whatever size higher. We're almost at even. All right, so now she's going in square. So we can get this centered. And now listen to the way it sounds as I'm hitting this. When it bottoms out, which is what you want, you'll hear the, the pitch of the hit change. Hear that? Solid. We're all the way seated in. So now at this point, we're going to take our carrier housing out. We're going to flip this puppy around, get it back into vice. Now, this is the part where we are going to start packing our grease in there because on this OEM housing, there is not a, uh, what is going on with my vice here? There is not a, uh, a section where you can, there's, there's no grease fitting to pack this thing. So... Let me get this set up, we'll get our grease gun out, and I'll show you guys what I do here when there's no grease fitting. Okay, now that my vise isn't fighting me also, this is just a mini grease gun. I mean, you could you could just rub it on there. Uh, I'm trying to actually use the rest of this grease that's in here so I can fill it with Maxima grease. Um, but, I'm just gonna uh, put some grease on it, man. Don't put this stuff in there dry. I know you're thinking it's probably not that big of a deal. Will it work without it? Yeah, but, I mean, you know, this is also, like fighting against corrosion too so you know you don't want to just don't put it in there don't don't put it in there without grease man you, you always want to grease up your movable or um moving parts on whatever machine you're working on so yeah it makes a mess and you know whatever but all right so i get this in there i'm gonna spin it as i put it in this way it doesn't uh bunch up in one area and it kind of coats itself for me I'm going to get my fingers on the inside here. We'll get some more. Get some more on this thing. You can never have too much of this stuff, man. 
Never have too much. Grease is cheap, guys. Grease is definitely your friend. Grease is your friend, which whoever put these bearings in last time obviously didn't didn't believe that, but well, spinning it as it goes in, it's going to kind of help it feed the grease in there. All right. All righty. All right, now we're nice and in there. I'm going to take my finger and wipe away any of this excess that we really don't need in there. A nice dirty rag that I'm going to grab in a minute with something clean and get grease all over it. That's how that's going to go. Mark my words. All right. And same procedure, man. I'm going to put myself a little anti-seize in here where the bearing's going to go. Even though there's grease, grease and anti-seize are two different things. No, it's not going to hurt if they mix together. It's, you know, it's not going to hurt anything. All right. Like that like that. Same deal. Get our bearing going in there. Grab my hammer that now has grease all over it. And we're going to try and get this one a little straighter. And we look in here. All right. Same deal. Pitch of the hit's going to change. Bang. Just like that, guys. But now, let's go for our grease seals. Uh, a lot of people put these in dry. I like to pre-pack them. So, um, instead of getting all messy here, I'm just going to put a light bead of grease in here. And it will pack itself when we press it down. That same tool that I used for the bearing will also work for these grease seals as long as it's the same size of it. So, we'll go ahead and get that set up like that. Got a nice little film in there. So on these seals, you always face the writing out of the part. There's a little spring in there. That's where the grease is going to get packed into. If you guys can see it in there, see a little silver part. So that's a good rule of thumb that, you know, usually any part when you're even in an engine, whatever, like say you're working on the right side of an engine, like a 400X engine or something, putting oil pump gear in, you know, there's a, there's a, a an H on there. So you always want to have whatever writing is on there facing you as you're installing it. So this just goes in just like the bearing, same on both sides. I'm going to do this one with you. I'll do the other one off camera. No, I don't need this two pound sledge for this, but this is what is at my grasp right now. And then get this puppy going in there. All right. And we are seated. Now, time for our O-rings. There's going to be two to go on here. You're going to see a groove, at least on the 250R. There's two. Um, put this on here. I'm also going to wipe these with grease and the carrier with anti-seize before I install it into the carrier. So just like that, man. Make sure that groove that it sits in is nice and clean. Don't have a bunch of, like, old crusty dirt and stuff in there. It takes two minutes to clean it. Two minutes to clean it and, you know... It goes in nice. You're not going to have a problem sliding this into the axle because it's not bulging out somewhere because it had dirt under it. All right, let me put the other one on, and I'll show you guys this thing fully assembled. Just like that, guys, we have a rebuilt OEM carrier. Like I said before, yeah, you could just buy a Chinese knockoff, but, you know, OEM carriers are, you know, one, they're worth money. You know, I could have sold this and probably bought three of those Chinese ones, but... You know, we know we got fresh bearings. They're not some cheesy Chinese knockoff bearings. They're going to last like two rides if you're lucky. Um, yeah, I've had good luck with the Chinese carriers before. I've run them. Um, and also, guys, if you want to know how to install and swap out an axle carrier, check out some of my older videos. I think I did one on the Raptor 700. So check that out. Uh, any of you guys that are wondering know that there's still no sign of that quad other than what I know that I'm not sharing yet. Um... I know one of you guys are going to ask, putting the grease around that sleeve, couldn't you just tap a hole in this and put a grease fitting? Yeah, I, I, I would say so. I would assume you probably could do that. 
Um, also, you can't get to it, though, unless you drill a hole in your swing arm, which I do not endorse. <laughs> Real quick, uh, just easy thing to do, man. Uh, you know, it takes a couple specialty tools. If you don't have them, you can still get it done. You're probably going to just struggle a little bit more. But like I said, this carrier was pretty seized together and corroded, so it's a little tougher. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to throw me a thumbs up because the video is almost over. I really appreciate that. And if I earned your subscription, hit the button, man, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!